Welcome back to the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series. Edmonton 100 from the Rexall Speedway. Three laps in the books. Andrew Ranger led the first one, collecting all important five bonus points. Now as his teammate Alex Tagliani has stretched out a bit of a lead in the Ubisoft Walmart Ford Fusion. And Trevor Siebert in that Ford Fusion is being hounded by our points leader. That's the 22 of Scott Steckley. But let's talk about what's going on up front. You gotta remember, last year the 27 run away and hit on everybody and used up his equipment real early and allowed JR to take the race away from him. Right now, you gotta think that Billy Burns is on the radio putting the reins on his driver, holding him back, and Tags is being able to, to lead the race. Well, there you see JR Fitzpatrick, the champion from last year's race. He did stalk the 27 of Andrew Ranger through the latter stages of last year's event and came home the winner. So you gotta think it's uh, JR Fitzpatrick thinking he can do the same thing here this year. Oh, absolutely. He's just sitting here watching. Hey, there's the 22 sliding down the inside of Sieber. Scott Steckley will pick up third spot under braking as he is going to bring the 84 of J.R. Fitzpatrick with him. Siebert's down low in the blocking position, but here comes J.R. Fitzpatrick on the outside. Well, not the preferred line, but you got to remember, he's trying to get to the outside apex. Oh, and he did squeeze J.R. Out, out of the position. So J.R. Fitzpatrick had a decision to make. The wall or the there spot, he and here he comes. Back hard on the outside. J.R. Fitzpatrick is going to get the spot this time. The young lion, J.R. Fitzpatrick, we've seen him go the outside at Mossport in the rain to get the lead of that race. And once again, he goes the big side. Down the inside again. Here comes the full throttle energy drink, car 19. That's Brad Graham. He'll move up into fifth spot. But back on the inside comes the 69 of Trevor Siebert. You see Anthony Simone and Don Thompson Jr. tailing that pack with DJ Kennington in the Castrol Syntec Dodge as well. There is Kennington in the 17. Ah, DJ Kennington in the big green machine, just sitting there nice and patient, picking them off one at a time. The 12 of John Gaunt is down pit lane, and Todd, it doesn't sound like that motor's running. No, fellas, the car of Johnny Gaunt is not running. Crew went to work immediately under the hood to have a look, but it is off, and looks like John Gaunt's day might be ending early. Wow, two races in a row, because last week in Vernon, that motor overheated just as they finished the last lap at Vernon, British Columbia. There's the 69 of Trevor Siebert. We've been watching him, but he has been dropping back the last couple laps. J.R. Fitzpatrick up by, and then the 19 of Brad Graham, and now he's in the clutches of the 17 of D.J. Kennington. Possibly something wrong. Well, I'll have to keep an eye on that for sure, but the race still is very exciting up front as J.R. Fitzpatrick is being haunted by the 19 of Brad Graham. There is J.R. Fitzpatrick as they continue to chase the two Dave Jacobs racing cars plus your points leader Scott Steckley. It's Alex Tagliani, your leader, with Andrew Ranger second and Steckley has caught up to the back bumper of Ranger. Look at those cars float using the curbs. You know, what they do is they, they use that curb to loosen the car up. What it does, it transfers the weight to the right rear tire or the left rear depending on which way they're going and that allows the car to turn harder and sharper. Good run for the 19 of Brad Graham. Historically not very strong on the road courses, but problems on the 69 of Trevor Siebert as he falls back. Todd's got an update. Fellas, yeah, the 69 car of Trevor Siebert has lost a little bit of ground. Problem seems to have neutralized, though. Initially, he thought he had a tire going down, and that's why he lost a couple of positions. Hanging on right now, the 17 car of DJ Kennington having trouble getting by him. We'll see if Trevor Siebert can hang on. Well, there's a few things that could be going on. You know, that there's a difference in rubber compounds between the open-wheel cars and these stock cars. He could have had some build-up. You know, his setup from yesterday will be different today with air pressures and the amount of rubber build-up. Until he gets comfortable, he'll sit back and just let the car come to him. Well, it does look like he is settling in there now in the 69 car. As you see Brad Graham hopping the curb, but there is the four of Don Thompson Jr. into the 95 of Anthony Simone, and Don Thompson will move the home hardware number four up a position. Well, over the curb and through the door, and that's how we get the next spot. There's a good look at your points leader, the 22 of Scott Steckley, and if he is your favorite driver, you can go on the internet, log on to NASCAR.ca, click on the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series page, and vote for your favorite driver this year. Absolutely. Vote often and vote lots because they deserve it. 
They sure do. Andrew Ranger in the Walmart Tide, number 27, chasing his teammate, Alex Tagliani, as Tagliani leads his first NASCAR Canadian Tire Series race ever. The rookie doing a wonderful job here in Edmonton. Well, he's got lots of laps here on this configuration, but it wasn't an open wheel car. But, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a motorcycle, a snowmobile, or a stock car. Once you've got laps and know where the braking points and passing zones are, you're good to go. Still feels kind of funny calling Tagliani a rookie, though. Yeah, for sure. The only guy to ever go wrestling with Paul Tracy. <laughs> There's the field coming by. You saw J.R. Fitzpatrick still in fourth spot. And how about that full throttle energy drink number 19 of uh, Brad Graham still inside the top five now with 26 laps to go here in Edmonton. Uh, great race shaping up as, as the 22 closes in on the 27. As again, I'll bet you right now Bill Burns is still holding the reins back in that driver town. Hold on, young fella. Don't be letting it go yet. Would he be doing the same thing for Alex Tagliani trying to keep him back? Oh, for sure. Alex Nagy, the crew chief on the 7, a wily veteran and a great stock car driver in his own right. He, will too, will be telling him, pace yourself, big fellow. Pace yourself. You saw John Gaunt, the 12th car, now back on track as they seems to have sorted the motor problems that had that 12th car stopped along pit lane. Good luck at Andrew Ranger with Scott Steckley still giving chase and a pretty decent gap back to fourth place of J.R. Fitzpatrick. And how about Brad Graham still running inside the top five, but a car down pit lane and not sounding too hot is the 77 of Derek Lynch. And Todd's waiting for that car to come by. Yeah, that car sounds awfully rough, guys. Derek Lynch, the 77 Allied Steel buildings in our long pit road, rumbling. The crew going to have a look underneath the hood. I don't know if it's a plug wire off or some other problem. They're pointing at one of the cylinders now. It might be a simple thing, and Derek Lynch can get back out. Wow, sounding that loud, it's, it, it possibly could be a broken header, or if it's just missing really bad, it's kind of hard for us to hear it on the microphone like that, but probably a broken header or a broken rocker shaft. The number 12 Centennial Dodge Chrysler Jeep Dodge of John Gaunt pulls out of the way of the leaders as Alex Tagliani continues to lead here with a full crowd in attendance. We're still in the early going. We'll be back. <laughs> 